Hey there, amazing audience who have joined the revolving time today. Life has a curious way of throwing unexpected curveballs our way, doesn't it? Today, we're diving into a topic that's tough, but one that each and every one of us might encounter on our journey, dealing with deceit and betrayal. Well my friends, today's story is published by DG here. I discovered my wife of 6 years had cheated on me twice and was going to do it again. I realized our marriage was a lie, so I told her to not make the second biggest mistake of life by trying to come home. Okay let's start the story and see what happened in there. When I discovered that my wife of 6 years had cheated on me 2 times and was going to do it again I was totally devastated. I have read about all the emotions that overwhelm a person when they realize the marriage they thought they had was a sham. My marriage was a sham and all those emotions flooded me like Katrina flooded New Orleans. My levee broke and the waters rushed in and engulfed everything I was and had been with my wife. Yes, I cried over it. When the flood of tears subsided there was not one thing recognizable from my marriage. It was all gone. The trust was gone. The respect was gone. The admiration was gone. The caring was gone. The sexual attraction was gone. The love was gone. You have seen the hurricane pictures. There is no spot that you can identify where you can jump in and begin to rebuild. It is just devastation and so overwhelming that you give up and walk away. That is what I would do with my marriage. I would give up and walk away. There was nothing there worth trying to save. She took it all spun it around until it was just a pile of unrecognizable trash. It was over. Susie and I had a fight. It was not an unusual fight since we did have them on occasion, as most married couples do, but this one ended up ugly. Susie had been trying to talk me into refurnishing our living room. She said that the furniture was getting old and she was tired of it and wanted to redo the room. I made it as plain as I could that the furniture wasn't old. It was only two years old, had cost a lot of money and that I was not going to spend that amount of money on new furniture already. She continued to tell me that she was sick of it and wanted new. I guess I am the one who made the mistake and escalated the argument when I said I suppose you are sick of me too, huh? Want to just go out and duck someone else because you are sick of me. Why can't you just be happy with what you have? She fired back, well, maybe I should go out and duck someone else. Then maybe you would realize what you had and could lose. Of course I didn't let that one go either and yelled, well, you decide what you want out of life Susie and just go for it. But don't expect me to be here waiting for you when you come back. Then she drove a spike in me when she said, I guess I should have married Phil instead of you. Maybe he wouldn't have been such a cheap b-starred like you are. That did it. I literally screamed at her, duck you and duck him too. I don't ever want to hear his name brought up again. And, you are not getting new furniture, no matter what you do or say. End of discussion. Update. I stormed out of the house and drove to the club for a few beers. I was furious and I needed time to cool off before I talked to her again. Phil was my all-time arch rival. He was the golden boy of our community. Everything he touched went his way with one exception. He touched my wife years ago, but she was in love with me and married me and not him. They dated a few times during a short period when she and I had broken up. He had his sights set on her and almost succeeded but not quite. She did marry me. I worked my ass off in my job and made a very respectable living. In fact, more than respectable. Phil looked at a project and it started making him money. I was in business for years and my reputation grew steadily because of hard work and honesty. Everyone just assumed that Phil was reputable and trustworthy. He never had to prove himself. Was I jealous? No, I wasn't jealous of his business position. I was raised to work hard and be honest and reliable and I would never be jealous of someone's success. But, I was a bit sensitive of him when it came to Susie. I would always remember that she had gone out with him, that he had touched her. It was about two hours later, right around 9pm and my cell phone rang. I looked at the number and it was my home phone number. I decided to let it go to my voicemail rather than talk to her at the moment because I was still pretty steep and on top of that I had a few under my belt and figured I might just say something I would regret later. A short time later I retrieved my voicemail and listened to her message. Larry, I called to tell you I was sorry for the things I said to you earlier. I guess you don't care enough to take my call though because you had to see it was me calling. Since you aren't coming home, I guess I will just go out for a while myself. See you later. That really cut it. I had started to come around after our argument, but now I was angry all over again. I got myself another beer and downed it in a couple of minutes and then went looking for her. I cruised through every bar parking lot in town and didn't see her car. I finally thought that maybe she had gone out with someone else so I drove over to her best friend Patty's house and sure enough, there was her car parked in front of Patty's house. I walked up to the front door and knocked. In about a minute Dave, Patty's husband came to the door and asked me, How are things with you Larry? I hear you and Susie had a little argument tonight. They are not here. They decided to do a bit of bar hopping tonight at the last minute. 
Well Dave, I didn't see Susie's car at the bar so I figured maybe she was here with Patty. Can you tell me what car Patty is driving so I can go look for them? She has the excursion tonight. I think they were going to start out at Bachelor's and work their way back toward here, he added. I left and drove straight to Bachelor's and sure enough Patty's excursion was in the parking lot. I thought about going right in and confronting Susie, but I was still a bit buzzed from all the beer and thought it might be better if I just sat in the car for a while and sobered up before we had it out again. A few minutes after 11pm they came out and got in Patty's car and left the parking lot. I followed at a safe distance, and as Dave had said they drove to the down the hill bar and went in. I again sat in the parking lot for a while just keeping an eye on things. I figured that it wouldn't be too long before they headed for the next place, and I wasn't wrong. At exactly 11.30pm they drove to what I figured would be the next and last stop of the night, Fuzzy's Pub at the Ramada Plaza Hotel. Midnight rolled around and Patty came out of the hotel and got into her car and drove away. What the duck is this? I asked myself. Just how foolish was Susie going to be here? Was she going to do something stupid? I knew I had to find out. Update 1. I got a baseball cap and my team shirt out of the trunk and put them on as some form of a disguise. Now I wasn't totally sobered up yet so my disguise was less than perfect. You see, my name was on the shirt. I didn't figure anyone would pay that close of attention to it though so I knew it was better than no disguise at all. Minutes later I worked my way into Fuzzy and found an out of the way spot where I could observe things. That is when I saw Susie with Phil. Son of a BTCH, she was with Phil. They were at a booth against the back wall of the bar about as far out of the way as you could get. I noticed that there was an empty booth right behind Susie so I moved toward it with as much caution as I could muster. I needn't have worried. The two of them were so engrossed in conversation that they wouldn't have noticed a water buffalo getting into that booth. From where I was seated I could hear their entire conversation except the couple of times when he must have leaned forward to kiss her and whispered to her. Thanks for coming Phil. I didn't want to have to keep Patty out all night, she said. No problem. Phil said, you know I love it when you and Larry have a fight. That is the only time you let me have a piece of that sweet as of yours. Seven years ago you two split up and I got to duck that hot as of yours for a while and twice more since you have been married. I am perfectly happy to give you another revenge duck tonight too. I wish you two would fight more often than you do. Well, she said, you know I love him to death, but when he angry with me like tonight I can't help myself, I need a revenge fuck just so he doesn't win. As I listened to this conversation the realization that she had cheated on me two times in the past six years of our marriage and was planning on doing it again tonight drove me to the condition I was in when I started telling you this story. She could say anything she wanted to say about loving me to death, but her actions proved otherwise. She ducked Phil to get even with me, to keep me from winning as she put it. That is not love. That is a selfish, uncaring BTCH and it caused all the changes I mentioned. Right or wrong, it destroyed me and my love. Don't tell me I am stupid because I won't listen. It is what it is and I knew I didn't love her anymore. Oh, I cried over the loss but it was over. I waited for a while wondering how long it would be before they headed for a room. It wasn't long before I heard him say, well Susie, you ready for? I could almost see the grin on her face. Dot dot dot. Lucky for them they got up and headed for the elevators. I was ready to kick. Maybe it was lucky for me because I think I actually may have done some serious damage to them. A short time later I followed them into the lobby. I couldn't tell what floor they had stopped on so I went to the house phone and asked for Phil Major's room. The phone rang three times before he picked up and I said with a slurred voice, ish this room 312. He replied, no this isn't 312, what the HLL are you doing calling this room at this hour? And he hung up. I asked them to call his room for me again and when he picked up I said, well, I thought this was 312, say, you are trying to fool me, and it is 312-ish isn't it? You dumb drunken mother ducker, this isn't room 312 it's 422 and if you call here again I am going to have the manager call the police. He slammed the phone down. Now who is calling me a dumb mother ducker anyway? Seems to me the dumb mother ducker is the guy who just gave a furious and dangerous husband the room number where his is going to duck the wife. Let's vote. Who is the dumb duck? Update 2. I rode the elevator to the fourth floor and walked down the hall to room 422. I listened at the door until I heard them in the heat of it and then I pounded on the door. I heard him yell, now what the duck, and I actually got a big kick out of that because I knew I would soon destroy his duck party. I stood back from the peephole so he couldn't see me and when he opened the door a crack I slammed it in so hard that the security chain burst off the door jam and the door flew open. There on the bed was my beautiful cheating wife, Knack as the day she was born. When I burst through the door she screamed and her face turned totally white. I am surprised she didn't pass out. Oh god no, oh god, oh god, no. 
Phil finally got over the shock of me breaking through the door and yelled at me, Larry, get your ass out of my room. I am going to call security. Remember what I said about dumb duck. Well I dot the dumb duck with one well-placed dot to his solar plexus and down he went. There were several minutes when he did not move at all. I would have no more trouble with him. Susie, you're lying cheating B2CH. I know everything. I heard you at Fuzzy's and I know it all. Don't bother to come home tonight. It would be a big mistake. Oh god no Larry. Let me come home. I can explain. This means nothing to me. I love you. Oh god no. You heard me you BTCH. Don't make the second biggest mistake of your life and come home. It will not turn out well for you. And yes, you can take that as a threat. I turned and walked out the door. I was actually surprised that I could be as calm as I was. I had wanted to kick them both minutes earlier. And taking only one dot at the dumb duck showed unbelievable control on my part. I know I was pretty abusive in my language to her but it could have been much worse. When I got to my car I got in and just sat there for a while trying to calm myself even more. I also figured I would wait around for a few minutes just to see if the police would show up or if Susie would leave with Phil. After about 15 minutes Phil came out of the hotel and got in a vehicle and left. A few minutes after he left Patty showed up again and Susie came out and got into the excursion. I was at least glad that the two of them hadn't stayed in the hotel room to duck after I left. It isn't as if the damage had not already been done, but that would have added insult upon injury or fuel to the fire as they say. Hum, that gave me an idea. Update 3. I drove home and went to bed. I don't even know what time it was that the phone rang and caller ID showed it was Patty. Larry, I know you are upset with Susie and don't want her to come home, but I wanted to call you and tell you that she is staying with Dave and I so you wouldn't worry about her. Patty, I wasn't going to worry about her anymore. I don't care about her anymore. You needn't have woken me up. What time is it anyway? It's 3 a.m. Larry and you can't tell me you don't care. I know you love Susie and she loves you. She is here and she is crying her eyes out over how stupid she was tonight and she wants you to forgive her and let her come home. Patty, she can't come home. Ask her if her stupidity goes back to the other two times she ducked Phil before tonight. Oh god no, Patty said as I hung up the phone. I guess she didn't know about the other times Susie had ducked that a hole. I am fortunate in that I am not one to get huge hangovers and besides I had quit drinking quite early in the evening so even though I was very tired I was up and about by 8 a.m. By 10 a.m. I was ready for my confrontation with Susie. I called Patty's house and told her that Susie could come home if she wanted to. I was standing out on the driveway when she pulled in a few minutes later. Dave and Patty had followed her home. I am sure they were there to make sure I didn't hurt her in any way. When Susie got out of her car her eyes were quite wide as she asked me, Larry, what is all of that in the front yard? Susie that is everything I could think of in this house that would remind you of me. Everything you have ever given to me. Everything I have ever given to you. It is all of the pictures of our courtship and our six years of married life. I cannot think of one thing left in the house that will remind you of me. I even put the old furniture out here so you could go out and buy new like you wanted. And the last thing is this, and I held up our wedding picture. I walked over to the end table that used to sit alongside my chair and set the picture on it. I walked the few paces back to the driveway and dropped a lighted match into the trail of gasoline I had poured out to the driveway. It lit and the flames quickly retraced my steps back to the pile of memories of me. It wasn't long before the whole pile was engulfed in flames. That was one HLL of a bonfire. There was little left except for ashes and burned out furniture framing. I looked over at Susie who was obviously in shock and said, You win Susie. I heard you tell Phil that you didn't ever want me to win. I hope it was all worth it. Our marriage is over. You can have everything else. I want nothing from this marriage. I only hope that I won't remember you either. You will be hearing from my attorney. Minutes later as I heard the sound of sirens approaching from down the street in a police squad car drove up and two officers came over to ask what had happened. It was a couple of minutes later that the fire department arrived to put out what was left of the smoldering mass. The gasoline had done its work and the pile had been reduced to charred rubble in minutes. This is just me destroying the remnants of a marriage in ruins officers. I am sorry for the trouble I have caused. Needless to say they took me into custody. As I was ushered into the squad car I glanced at Susie and could see her sobbing. I spent a couple of days in jail and they had a psychiatrist evaluate my sanity. Surprisingly they discovered that I was sane. Saddened and destroyed but sane. I think they would have let me out sooner. But they wanted to observe me for a couple of days just to be certain. I did make bail and went to pick up my car from my office parking lot. All of the items I had wanted to keep were in the car. It was mainly my clothing and a few other personal items. I drove to the closest motel and got myself a room for a few days until I could locate an apartment to rent. 
A few weeks later I was completely settled and had started to move on with my life. My court case came up and I went and pled guilty to all charges and was fined $5,000 in court costs. That was a small price to pay to wipe out my ruined marriage. Susie contested the divorce and kept leaving me voice messages on my cell phone. She was begging me to talk to her, to forgive her because it meant nothing to her, to take her back. I left one message on our home phone when I knew she would be at work. I said, Susie, you tell me it meant nothing to you, but it meant everything to me. Do you understand? It meant everything to me. Goodbye. I never heard from her again. Final update. The divorce did go through and I gave her everything she wanted. I just wanted to be done with her. Phil's wife got wind of the whole thing and divorced him and really took him to the cleaners. Apparently Susie wasn't the only wife that Phil consoled when they fought with their husbands. A couple of weeks after I barged into his hotel room and caught him with my wife I ran into Phil at Fuzzy's. I think I must have surprised him because he didn't have time to get up and escape. I leaned on his shoulder as he sat on a bar stool. And I told him that I was pretty sure if he hung around town he was bound to have some kind of serious accident someday. When his divorce was final he started liquidating what was left of his holdings and before too long his absence from town was obvious. Strangely, not too many people really missed him all that much. Well, I actually had hoped he would stick around town. I run into Susie around town once in a while and every time she tells me how sorry she is and asks if I will call her to talk. I just nod and walk away and to this day I have not called her but she keeps asking. Who knows, maybe someday I will call her. Thank you for being a part of our journey and we look forward to sharing more powerful stories with you in the future. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel and stay connected with our community. Remember, this channel exists because of your support and I want it to be a place where we can all come together, learn, and have a great time. Your feedback is vital and I appreciate every single suggestion and comment you provide. Take care yourself and see you soon.